their DBM at NC State in 2013. After graduation, Dr. Hawley spent five years working for Banfield Pet Hospital in Fayetteville. Dr. Hawley developed a passion for improving leadership, well-being, and diversity in the veterinary profession. Putting action behind his desires, Dr. Hawley currently serves as the president of the North Carolina Association of Minority Veterinarians, and he is the co-founder of Get Money Vet, uh, which is a company that provides well-being solutions for the veterinary community. Uh, through Get Money Better, Dr. Holly aims to help all members of the veterinary community to pursue personal development, mindfulness, and the highest level of self-care. Last, but certainly not least, Dr. Holly recently released his first book, titled The Seven Principles to a Guaranteed Body Transformation in 12 Months or Less. Through speaking, coaching, and writing, Dr. Holly aspires to help all members of the veterinary community He's an active speaker, entrepreneur, coach, and author. Dr. Holly. All right, thank you so much. I am really, really, really excited to be here with all of you today. I mean, just such gratitude for the opportunity to come and share my story. I know Renee is excited to share her story as well. Um, again, my name is Dr. Quincy Hawley, graduate from the NC State's class of 2013, and this is, this is, it, this is awesome. So we started a company called uh, Get Motivated, which provides well-being solutions for all members of the veterinary community. So we work with veterinary nurses, um, actual veterinary hospitals, pre-veterinary students, and practice managers, anyone in the veterinary profession who will actually work with in terms of coaching, we do a lot of speaking, so we'll be traveling to California in the upcoming months, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Alabama, and it's, it's really an honor and pleasure to be here in Indiana with the, the, the purview of veterinary students, so thank you for having us. Now, our purpose with Get Motivated is literally to make poor veterinary well-being a thing of the past. And I know that sounds like a wild and sort of crazy goal because the profession is going through a bit of a challenge right now with things like compassion fatigue and burnout. But Renee and I honestly feel that we have some really, really simple to follow solutions that we know will help all members of the veterinary community. They are solutions that are underutilized. But I am sure a five-year-old could master most of the principles that we're going to cover today. So I really hope you enjoy uh, today's presentation. If you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, the president of the North Carolina Association of Minority Veterinarians, but I also wear like a million other hats in terms of uh, veterinary medicine. Well, um, so why, why did I really want to start a movement, a company, to address something like veterinary well-being? And the main reason is because, as I stated earlier, I suffer from poor well-being myself. And the reason I, I want to do this presentation is sort of to even move into this area altogether is because, A, I think this message is really important. What is more important than your own personal happiness, than creating a life that you want and a life that you can actually thrive in and be happy with and wake up every morning with uh, excitement? And the, the same message also saved my life. all get lots of the doctrine, if you will, or the science behind it and how to be successful in areas. We don't get much of the just human skills that we need to sort of complement the veterinary uh, education that we have. So when we go to veterinary school, we're getting tons and tons and tons of the science, which understandably so. Like, I didn't pay $135,000 to go to veterinary school to learn personal development and about mindfulness, things that I can learn on my own and practice on my own. But I, I do, do believe it's a strong component of just being the, the absolute best veterinarian that you can be, and essentially the absolute best person that you can be. talk that we do. This is 2018. We, we are millennials. Selfie time, right? <laughs> Let's go ahead. Put your big smile. We're gonna go ahead and switch. This is my good, this is my good side. <laughs>
that two totes lost and three totes lost, they're not the same. All right? <laughs> Aside from the fact that one has three toes and one has two toes. So they each have three toes on the back, I'm pretty sure. But on the front, the two toe has two and the three has three. But more importantly, listen to this. This could save your life or at least your skin, okay? Two toes laws have teeth. Like this, this is a two toes slot here. This one and then this one. All right, you need to know this. Pay attention. All right? These don't have really, really, really sharp canines and they're more docile, which is why it's really close to me, okay? This one has canines like a German Shepherd, <laughs> and they're not docile, and they will use them. So your next question may be like, but you're rubbing noses with them. What? Because I'm smart. Snickers so, likes teddy bears. So everyone else was getting bit by these sloth sloths. Like all the other like interns, they were picking up the two toes and letting them like get their feet around like, like the, they have the tree trunk. And then these sloths just, they, they always keep their heads back like this. And out of nowhere, they just go. <laughs> <laughs> and they would bite the little bejesus out of people and it would crunch. I'm like, ah, oh, oh. And so they're like, all right, Quincy, it's your turn to pick up this slug. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think so. So I realized that this one loved teddy bears. He was always hugging a teddy bear in his cage. So I was like, I'm going to grab a teddy bear. So I grab the teddy bear, I let him grab the teddy bear, and then I hold them both. Um, because the problem is, when they lock their legs around you, you're, you're at their mercy at that point. Right? It takes two people to get them off. You're not one of the two. So three people. Um, and then not, not just successful in terms of money, but successful in terms of happiness, their relationships, having a full, a will of well-being, if you will. And these are the secrets that they, that I've learned from them and that they have mastered and that I have incorporated into my own life. And I, I can't even recall the last time I had a bad day. So, awesome stuff. Any questions? Yes. And secret number three, what does MIPE stand for? Yes, I'm sorry about that. I did kind of blow through that. It stands for motivational, inspirational, positivity, and educational brainwashing. And so again, I, like, I, I view my brain, I view the, the space around my head as an iron gate. Nothing negative in it. Ping, 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 ping. I don't let anything negative in. But positive stuff, I just mm -hmm. I immerse myself in it. You should you should be sick of positive stuff. You should be sick of motivation and inspiration. And you know, motivation is something that you need to do on a very frequent basis. Alright? It's kinda like it's kinda like bathing. You don't just bathe one time and say, I'm clean for life. Right? You can't just listen to motivation one time and expect it to actually stick. Listen to it every single day, and so you can almost repeat back the stuff that you're hearing. Any other questions? Well, like, what story are you going to tell yourself when one of your classmates walks into you? What's your name? Will. Will says, Will, you think you're an idiot. You think you're an idiot. So Will's got some options at this point, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're only going to go over two or three of those options, um, but Will has a choice. He can believe what I just said and say, how did he figure it out so fast, right? <laughs> <laughs> or he can look at himself and say, you know, this guy just met me. Like, how could he possibly know that I'm dumb? He doesn't, he doesn't even know what's going on in my mind. He can't read my thoughts. He can't sense my emotions necessarily. So he can tell himself that maybe this guy is just a hater. And he knows that I'm smarter than him, and that's why he's telling me that I'm stupid, right? So he, he can build himself up based off of me or one of his classmates or an instructor telling him that he's stupid, or he can shrink from it and say, he's right. I work for a really, really, really busy practice. So straight out of school, I was probably doing Gosh, anywhere from 10 to 15 surgeries a day, seeing about 30 to 35 cases a day. As a new grad, and I believe in, in my first 30 days, I did an intestinal resection and anastomosis surgery. And as a new grad, I'm just like, this is intense. The dog lived. I was excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a stressful procedure. And I didn't have any tools. Like the information I'm going to come with you all today, 
I, I didn't really have that ingrained into me, so I didn't have any coping mechanisms. The stress started to build up. My wife, she's sitting there. Wait your hand. Yeah, she's a veterinary as well. She graduated from Tuskegee's College of Veterinary Medicine in 20, 2013 as well. She does mobile acupuncture uh, for dogs and cats, which is really cool. But we worked at the same hospital, and it, we, we were stressed. We were stressed. And if you don't have any coping mechanisms, like healthy coping mechanisms, then perhaps you adopt some non healthy coping mechanisms. So I started drinking a lot. I'm not proud of that. I'm sort of thankful for the journey that I had because it, lit, it, it leads me to being here with all of you because I overcame that challenge. But I would, I would literally get off of work, go to the first gas station on the way home, get an alcoholic beverage, and pour it in a cup, throw the can away, and, and drink and drive on the way home. Um, it's, I'm not saying that it was the job that made me do that. I think, I, think, I think the job was fine. It was me. And when I changed me, all of that changed. So that carried on for about three years. And it was the day after the 2016 presidential election that something came over me. So I love the stock market. And I was, I, I was watching stocks like normal. And uh, I, I just realized that all the smoking, the drinking, the unhealthy behaviors that I had, that I was literally running myself into an early grave probably. And I knew it wasn't right to my to my wife. I knew it wasn't right to my had, 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 had like maybe a two-year-old at the time. Um, and she's three now. She's super cute by the way. But it wasn't fair to to the it was very private. So the people at work they didn't know that I was drinking because my performance and my productivity are still good. And I believe that for a lot of veterinary professionals, they can easily speak their personal issues that can be really detrimental under the rug because the performance is there. So there's no real sign that an individual may be struggling. The day after the presidential election, I made a commitment to myself to spend every second, minute, hour, day, week, and month, and year of the rest of my life pursuing my full potential. The, the title of today's presentation is How to End Bad Days Once for All. I can say that with conviction because I feel like I've done that. Over the past two years, I, I don't think I've had any bad days. And people think that I'm exaggerating when I tell them that. But if you have the right toolbox, you can easily make that so. And that's why I, in January 2018, January 12th, I remember the day, I left my uh, job as a practicing veterinary because I wanted to share my story. I wanted to share the strategies and tools that I have with pre-veterinary students and veterinary students and veterinarians so that hopefully I, I can save someone the trouble of living a subpar life of moving on. So it's right, right yeah. around you. But in terms of higher viewpoints, the first one is, there are three of them, the only thing that can go wrong in this world is my own personal attitude, and I can always make that right. All right, so that's the first one. That one was revolutionary for me. The second one is, there are no bad or evil people in the world, just perfectly good people that sometimes get off the track. And this is going to take you very, very, very far in terms of, of your career, and also through veterinary school, if you master these two points alone, and if you do this one, you're, you're going to be a rock star. There's an advantage in every disadvantage, and I tweak that a little bit, and I say, hey, find the opportunity in chaos. So to get motivated, the company that I started, it exists because I found the advantage in my own person. I lean on this on a daily basis. Because how do you live in a world where you can get a phone call and have some tragic news delivered to you? Or maybe you can be on the way to a really important event and then, and then you get stuck in traffic. Like, how, how do you deal with that? And the way to do that is to know that those are just illusions of things that are really, really bad. So the hospital situation that I was in, it wasn't really, really bad. It was my attitude towards all of that that gave me the issue. As proof of that, nothing changed in my, in my environment. I had the same wife. 
I had the same daughter. I had the same, <laughs> the same job. I had the same everything, same car, same city, same people, same family. But what changed? I changed, and then everything else around me changed. So just remember that. And the last thing I want to share with you, it's actually cliche, and I'm not a huge fan of cliches, I think they're kind of weird, but I'm gonna use one nonetheless. And that is to never stop dreaming and to always dream big. You can and you should live a life of your dreams and complete happiness. And the fact that I even stand here before you today is visible and tangible proof that if you're brave enough, bold enough and courageous enough to dream it, that you can absolutely achieve it. I'm gonna leave you with a poem, and I'm certainly not a poet, so if it sucks, that's my disclaimer. <laughs> but one day, after I dropped my daughter off at daycare, and she's about to turn three in June, and she's super cute. Thankfully, she took after her mom. But after I dropped her off, I was sitting in my 2008 Toyota Tundra in my driveway, and these words came to me from seemingly nowhere, and tonight, I wish to share them with all of you. And that poem is titled, The Answer. The universe is the nest of life, which provides us with the quest of life. If you want the absolute best of life, then discover your dreams and make grand requests of life. Pursue your dreams with faith for the, for the rest of life, as the pursuit provides the test of life. And if you want to ace the test of life, and let's face it, you're all overachievers and gunners, so I know you want to ace the test. If you want to ace the test of life, dream big, take massive action, never quit in anything, and invest in life. Act now, how much time is left in life. If you live your dreams today, then you will never fear death in life. Believe these words and what they suggest of life, or receive no doubt in ever. In summary, find the opportunity that's hidden within chaos and the advantages and the disadvantages. Continuously advance through daily and deliberate personal development. And last, and most importantly, never ever stop dreaming. And always, always, always dream big. Class of 2018, congratulations and welcome once again on your fantastic achievement. I wish you all the best, both personally and professionally. Thank you.